2021 has been an absolutely historic year here in crypto. It is without a doubt the most important year in the history of this industry. And to do it justice, we will be recapping everything, the good, the bad, and the hideously ugly. And that's because what happened over the last 12 months will forever alter the course of crypto, as well as the history of the internet. So get excited because today we have a first of its kind documentary episode where we go deep and show you everything that happened throughout 2021 and how we believe it's going to impact the future. We have so much ground to cover. So without any further ado, let's dive in. 2021 was a prosperous year. It began with Bitcoin blasting to new all-time highs, which it had not experienced since 2017. We then saw altcoin runs of biblical proportions with many different narratives and types of coins experiencing wild astronomical success. People's lives were completely transformed throughout the course of weeks and months as rampaging bullishness and almost nonstop opportunities seemed to avail themselves at nearly every twist in turn of this magical year in crypto. I mean, just take a look at the total market caps chart and you'll see how the current levels where we're sitting make the peak of 2017 look like a little molehill next to a massive mountain. Alongside the price growth, we've seen the evolution of the actual technology that powers this industry. Everything from scalable smart contracts chains, the ETH killers, if you will, to DeFi, NFTs, and now blockchain gaming and metaverse. We've seen the explosion of technologies that are certain to affect the future of many different industries. And while many of these are still in their infancy, the world has now taken notice of what Web3 can truly accomplish. Pandora's box has been opened, and what happened this year will forever affect the future of finance and technology. And while pricing can often overshoot the actual technical innovation in crypto land, this creates the boom-bust S-curve of technology adoption that we've come to know, love, and sometimes hate here in crypto land. We simply have to take some time to acknowledge how far we've come and how important the current changes happening are to our world and beyond. As Twitter personality Santiago Arsanto said, one of the hardest things in crypto is that what you think may happen in 10 years can actually happen in one year. Managing through that has been one of the hardest and biggest learnings for me. So to dig into everything wild, crazy, and unimaginable that happened here in 2021, we have to go through each and every moment that defined this iconic year. Before we start with 2021 though, it's important to understand the climate. As for those who were hyper engaged with crypto, as we were here on this channel and many of the followers here on this channel were, we know that the stage was set by everything that happened in 2020. In order to understand 2021, you have to understand 2020. Just like in order to understand 2022, the ultimate goal of this video, we have to understand 2021. So let's take a brief moment to understand what happened in 2020 that was so special. Now you can't even talk about crypto in 2020 without saying the magical word DeFi. DeFi exploded in 2020 from a niche potential use case for crypto to the bell of the ball, the toast of the town, literally all anyone cared about for a significant portion of 2020. We call this magical moment DeFi summer. Now it started with the explosive TVL, total value locked growth of Compound. And then when Compound issued their governance token, that thing went absolutely insane. The Compound Finance governance token comp unleashed an absolute tsunami of interest and excitement around DeFi. But in order to get the most yields out of a project like Compound, you needed to constantly be adjusting your strategies. And that's when we got a revolution in the form of Yearn Finance. Yearn Finance created by Andre Cronier showed the power of a fair launch token that was not sold, but rather farmed by active participants in an ecosystem. Yearn Finance set the playbook in many ways, showing the power of a fair launch, the importance of yield farming optimizers, where you could stake your stable coins and earn very, very impressive double digit APYs. The combination of Compound and Yearn Finance and the success of their tokens led to an absolute tornado of DeFi energy. We started seeing new forks of YFI come out literally every day. And even though a lot of these projects were copy paste, have no fear because the naming conventions were even worse. 
with YFII, YFIII, and YFIIII, also at one point being highly talked about potential alternatives to their forefather, urine finance. In fact, many Twitter personalities reminisce on DeFi summer as the absolute pinnacle, the peak of what crypto degeneracy, altcoin season, and the magical sport of aping in or jumping in almost blindly into exotic altcoins and the unthinkable level of gains that can come from that. And in this world, we all became degens and apes, pounding our chest and virtue signaling on who had done less research before investing in a coin. Now, of course, I'm being a bit sarcastic here, but it was in these moments that nomenclature like degening or aping became very common to use. DeFi exploded from just a niche activity with tens of millions of dollars involved to a massive industry with tens of billions of dollars involved within just a few months. DeFi summer actually prepared us for yet another move besides DeFi in meme coins because DeFi summer peaked actually with the advent, the rise of food coins. For example, Yam's Finance. There were several projects that used food emojis. In fact, one very notable one named Sushi Swap. And even though a lot of these coins seemed at the time to be blatant, scammy, low quality projects, projects like Sushi Swap emerged and proved that great things can come from often humble or seemingly scammy beginnings. DeFi mania was by all means the absolute peak of degeneracy. The reality is that it was very hard to explain to new people and it wasn't bringing in new participants into the market so much as reawakening the seasoned veterans here in crypto land that had been biding their time waiting carefully for the next altcoin trend. There is little doubt that the biggest catalyst of 2020 beyond DeFi mania was Michael Saylor. So let's talk about how the Saylor effect completely changed the history of 2020 in crypto and set the stage for an absolutely earth shattering and historic 2021. Now, I had never heard of Michael Saylor before 2020, but little was I to know that that would change in a massive way and Michael Saylor would become one of the biggest Bitcoin bulls in the history of this young industry. While everyone had been talking about institutional adoption for years, Michael Saylor and his publicly traded microstrategy made this meme into a reality. Don't let your memes be dreams. Michael Saylor made MicroStrategy the first publicly traded company to put Bitcoin on its balance sheet meaning that it took its cash reserves and converted it into Bitcoin. And this move triggered Elon Musk and many other publicly traded CEOs to inquire as to whether or not this was possible or easy to do at a scale like that of MicroStrategy, using hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. It's actually pretty eerie when you look at the chart and you see the day that Michael Saylor joined the Bitcoin movement, the effect on the Bitcoin chart, leading it to break out of a long-formed consolidation range and and bust through its prior all-time high seemingly without breaking a sweat. Without a doubt, Michael Saylor's energy and passion for Bitcoin at the tail end of 2020 set up this absolutely monstrous 2021 in crypto land. Michael Saylor started doing TV appearances, talking about Bitcoin and its many use cases as the most dominant financial network in the world. His passion for Bitcoin led to many traditional finance investors believing that Bitcoin was now a superior option to hedge against inflation and protect their wealth. In many ways, you can see the Saylor effect as opening Pandora's box, blending the highly regulated world of publicly traded tech companies with the persistent gray zone that is blockchain and cryptocurrency but doing it in a way where if they were to then indict Bitcoin, it would then have a direct and negative effect on publicly traded companies listed on the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. This is a huge step and one that undoubtedly opened up a path for a Bitcoin ETF as well as an entire Bitcoin industry to thrive here in the United States. Michael Saylor's belief in Bitcoin and passion for it was coupled with one other massive trend that became wildly apparent towards the end of 2020, which was the rapidly careening out of control inflation narrative and the fact that many Americans started to believe almost overnight that cash is trash. By the end of 2020, the numbers were starting to roll in on money printing, and it completely boggled most people's minds that $9 trillion, or 22% of the entire US dollar circulating supply, was created in 2020. 
You don't need to be a rocket scientist to understand that if you print that much money, that there's going to be a negative effect. That of course, everyone knows that money loses value. But the fact that there was so much aggressive money printing in response to the flu outbreak, of course, for people who are new on this channel, we don't say the name of the pandemic flu because it can flag videos here on YouTube. So we just call it the flu. Hope that doesn't offend anyone out there who's had their life impacted by this, which is pretty much everybody. As people realized that cash is trash, it allowed Bitcoin to take center stage as many people started to realize that inflation was out of control, that money printing was in unprecedented unprecedented zones, and that the best defense against this was actually Bitcoin. This led to an absolutely wild Q4 in crypto land, where almost to the day, three years after the historic 2017 peak, Bitcoin had finally busted through its $20,000 all-time high. Finally, the stage was set for the most historic year in the history of the blockchain. By just a few days into January of 2021, crypto had absolutely exploded, with Bitcoin pushing upwards of 300% or more from when Michael Saylor had just a few months before begun his Bitcoin purchasing for the balance sheet of MicroStrategy. But Michael Saylor wasn't alone, because soon the most famous, prolific inventor of our times, Elon Musk, who had trolled cryptocurrency for many years, announced publicly that Tesla would be acquiring Bitcoin for its balance sheet to the tune of $1.5 billion. Tesla buying Bitcoin completely changed the narrative, as Tesla has been an innovator pushing the pace of adoption in the automotive industry to the point where it became the new Apple, the new most innovative product producer in the country. And Elon Musk is widely considered the new Steve Jobs, with someone like Musk entrusting a significant portion of Tesla's balance sheets into the hands of Bitcoin, the narrative got completely turned on its head. Tesla was without a doubt the most famous, most important tech investment that was on the market throughout the 20 teens. The amount of money in Tesla, the amount of investors in Tesla, make it so that anything Tesla does directly affects the vast majority of the American tech investment population. Tesla buying Bitcoin was one of the most important stamps, certifications of how far this asset had come since its creation back in 2009. Bitcoin was now being held by one of the most important companies in the world. And speculation on which company would be next or which government would be next quickly overwhelmed the internet. After Tesla, we saw huge mega corporations and payments giants like PayPal and Visa joining crypto and signaling that they would not just be allowing and empowering Bitcoin payments, but also a variety of other crypto assets. Tesla, in so many words, opened the floodgates. Some other major news that came out of mega corporations this year around crypto was the eventual IPO or initial public offering for Coinbase, which ended up being the biggest IPO of any financial services company in the history of the public markets. Of course, just like the internet saw bigger IPOs than we ever saw with brick and mortar, the same is true with crypto, as each layer of the internet adds exponentially more rocket fuel for the value that it could add to the world. It should come as no surprise that the coin IPO was absolutely titanic in proportions. However, once again, this is an important milestone on the journey for crypto becoming a totally mainstream asset class. Crypto companies at some point need to go public, even if it's the old fashioned way. And Elon Musk and Michael Saylor inspired a wave of crypto institutional investors. This wasn't just a one-off event. In fact, crypto in 2021 will go down as the biggest wave of institutional adoption for these assets in the history of the industry. This is no small potatoes with over $25 billion being invested from venture capital participants into the crypto ecosystem throughout the year. While Tesla may have unleashed a tidal wave of institutional adoption for cryptocurrency, Bitcoin in specific, as well as more companies putting it on their balance sheets, Elon quickly became enshrined in the hall of shame here in Cryptoland when he started relentlessly promoting Dogecoin. 
Now, Dogecoin is a meme coin that dates back to 2014, was created as a joke, and the original creators have long since distanced themselves from the project. It's a coin with no purpose, no dev team, and no ongoing development. Yet Elon found Dogecoin to be fun and proclaimed himself as the CEO of Dogecoin, often referencing it in his Twitter bios and making tweets about Dogecoin. This led to TikTok creating the theory that Dogecoin was destined to hit a dollar, effectively pointing to Elon Musk as the most important and powerful person in the world, and with his backing, assuming that there was no way it couldn't reach a dollar. Of course, that was no small feat, as Doge reaching a dollar would put it squarely within the top 10 of all cryptocurrencies. But Moon it did. In fact, the growth of Dogecoin throughout this entire saga inspired an entire wave of dog coins, what we now lovingly refer to as meme coin mania. While everyone was looking for a wild alt season to take place where Ethereum and major L1 chains, as well as interesting innovations in DeFi and NFTs would explode with value much in the way we had seen a 2017 style altcoin season. What we didn't realize was that a lot of this new capital would be consumed by Doge and and other dog coins like Shiba Inu, another dog meme coin created in the shadow of Doge that was shockingly, over the course of this year, able to actually flip Doge in market cap, get listed on Coinbase as well as almost every other major cryptocurrency exchange, and actually become, dare I say, a meaningful part of the crypto economy? Now, the reality of dog coin and meme coin mania is that it drove an entire class of new crypto investors to absolutely useless coins with no fundamentals, and all they were good for was turning fractions of a fraction of a fraction of a penny into something a bit more. However, the market went completely irrational, and meme coins were, at one point, the only type of asset doing any kind of gains in crypto land. The entire fad grew and grew until Elon Musk was destined to make his first appearance hosting SNL, where many people believed that he would intentionally pump Dogecoin to a dollar. The reality was much less exciting as he effectively called Dogecoin more or less a Ponzi or a scam. I believe he called it a hustle. Regardless, the internet was very displeased and Doge went from its then price of 69 cents, I know it's almost as if the memes write themselves, down, down a staggering steep cliff to where it sits right now at about 17 cents. In the process, it left many newbies in crypto completely wrecked, feeling completely burned by the world's richest man and an industry that had promised them easy gains and wealth creation. Without a doubt, meme coin mania was a bad thing for the industry as it attracted a ton of capital to the worst types of projects. Meanwhile, fundamentally strong projects with interesting technology continued to underperform the latest and greatest dog meme coin with no use case and no fundamentals. However, there are learnings from this. And one of the the biggest learnings is that attention is everything. Memes were able to draw the attention of a new generation, a new class of crypto buyer. And with that attention, they were able to grow dramatically, exponentially through the ranks on the crypto market cap lists. Where goes the attention of the industry goes the value. This is the biggest fundamental takeaway, is that where the attention is, is where the value is. Not where the technology is, but where the people are focusing. It doesn't matter what it's used for, it just matters that everyone's focusing on it. And as sore as we are from the downfall of Dogcoin Mania, the reality is, if we learn from this, we can return stronger and build better tech on the back of the lessons that we've learned. Memes weren't just taking hold in crypto land. What we saw was a group called Wall Street Bets effectively trying to create short squeezes in the stock market. They did this by aggressively planning coordinated buys on the absolute worst stocks on the stock market. Projects like GameStop and AMC, whose business models had long since been outdated by the internet and by the pandemic. But Wall Street Bets proved that a group of coordinated internet users were more powerful than the hedge funds. By creating short squeezes in the stock market that were rapidly met with safeguards, the regulators stepping in and stopping this from happening, the mask was pulled off of the stock market and it revealed this market to be a highly regulated and unfair playing field where the everyday man was not allowed the same tools for manipulation that the big hedge funds, the big financial entities use each and every day. And when millions of people were stopped from creating financial history with Wall Street bets on the stock market, they quickly shifted their attention to crypto. Meme stocks quickly turned into meme coins.
Meme coin mania also took place largely on non-Ethereum chains, like Binance Smart Chain being ground center. What we saw was that cheaper and faster was what the market demanded and that they didn't care as much about decentralization or sustainability. What people wanted was access to high risk opportunities with very low fees. And that's what they got on Binance Smart Chain. But what they didn't know was that the market was going to change in a massive way. 2021 was cruising along. We were now in late March, had seen the astronomical rise of Bitcoin, adoption from publicly traded companies like Tesla, Elon Musk himself, and the explosion of meme coin mania. But if you think the market had shown its true colors, you were so wrong, as this year had more twists and turns than a Stephen King novel. And what really showed where this industry was going was what happened in response to the rubble of the first first major crash of the year, which many, myself included, was even fooled into believing was the beginning of a bear market. In April, we saw Bitcoin fail once again to break through its highs in the low $60,000 range. And no matter whose fault it was, the leveraged traders, the lack of institutional support, the dog coins sucking up all the liquidity, what we saw was that the market completely collapsed with Bitcoin going from about $60,000 all the way down to the low 30s and even briefly below there. But this was no ordinary price collapse. In fact, there were several massive pieces of news that caused this. First and foremost, you had Elon Musk, who just a few months later had turned into a massive crypto and Bitcoin fanboy. Out of nowhere, Elon published a tweet saying that Tesla could no longer support Bitcoin due to environmental concerns and that they would look into re-enabling Bitcoin payments if the environmental concerns around Bitcoin mining were resolved. This came almost perfectly in concert with a news report that China was going to ban Bitcoin mining throughout the entire country. Now they say good things come in threes. And the reality is I can't remember what the other horrific news articles that came out that week were, but they were many and varied. It felt like all at once, the bullishness that we had felt earlier in the year had been completely inverted. And everywhere you looked, you saw bear signal after bear signal. It felt almost stranger than fiction. The market was made to look like it was going through an apocalypse. And that's another big piece of learning from 2021, which is something that we learned very well in 2017, which is that big news and negative news around China is never to be trusted. But we saw it proven again, just like clockwork here in 2021, as the seemingly devastating news of China banning mining, as well as Elon rejecting Bitcoin and Tesla backpedaling their Bitcoin position. It felt like all of the excitement had flipped into negativity, almost too perfectly, like a storybook, like a dream turning into a nightmare. And this is when curiosity killed the cat, because it's almost as if a global network of super powerful and connected financial backers decided that prices were too high and they needed to throw a wet blanket on the raging inferno that is cryptocurrency. And try they did, but succeed they did not as it became very clear through on-chain metrics that big whale buyers continually gobbled up the Bitcoin dip throughout the low 30,000s and below. The mid-year crypto crash was one of the most important learnings that we can take away from this year. One, don't trust the news. When news is coupled with massive dumps in price, it's oftentimes a manipulative event created by the whales to ensure that normal people like you and me don't hold our valuable crypto and that we sell them at cheap prices to institutional buyers. Two, we learned that crypto's adoption cycle was so powerful that even an insanely powerful man like Elon Musk couldn't stop the party. And three, we learned that there was an entirely new dynamic in the market during the bearish periods that could come in and save the day. Twenty twenty one is historic as it saw the explosion of one of the most impactful technologies in the entire crypto space, the NFT. The term NFT was foreign even to most crypto people at the start of 2021. But here at the end of 2021, it's become so ubiquitous and gone so mainstream that even your average TikToker and Fortnite player has some concept of what an NFT is. Certainly nothing in the history of cryptocurrency has been as viral or gone as mainstream as the NFT. As you can see from the volumes on OpenSea, December 2020 saw just a few million dollars in NFTs being exchanged. Certainly nothing worth writing home about and an industry home to hundreds of billions of dollars of value at the time. But very soon millions turned into billions as NFTs became all the rage. 
Now, NFTs had a very small moment in about September of 2020, but it was a nice forecasting, enough so that I called NFTs as the biggest trend to watch in 2021 back in my videos in December of 2020. And this, of all my predictions in the history of this channel, was by far the biggest and most accurate. We saw NFTs pick up big time in February and March, but then immediately they died down with projects losing almost all their value overnight. But as altcoin season, Bitcoin's new $60,000 highs and meme coin mania all collapsed seemingly simultaneously, with many people wondering whether crypto was doomed to suffer another multi-year bear market. NFTs came in to save the day. You see, the 2021 NFT mania got kicked off with three important events. First was the rise of CryptoPunks. At one point, all of the rich people in the galaxy decided that they needed to own a CryptoPunk, and the floor price of CryptoPunks went absolutely parabolic, with some noteworthy sales in the millions and one Sotheby's auction in the tens of millions for one of the rarest items in the entire collection. This was part one of NFTs being seen as a real store of value. Part two was the Beeple auction. Beeple is the most famous NFT artist, and he made history with a $69 million NFT auction being purchased at Christie's, the fine art auction house that is home to priceless treasures like Picassos and Monet's. To see NFTs being auctioned alongside these cultural treasures, and then to see one command such an astronomically high dollar figure enshrined NFTs as a new and legitimate form of art. Soon the NFT world erupted, with Nifty Gateway hosting new artists each and every day doing multi-million dollar drops. It was absolute insanity, but very quickly the market shifted, and it did so in response to the third most important innovation in the NFT space, which is Board Ape Yacht Club. Board Ape Yacht Club created a new version of CryptoPunks, which is essentially a 10,000 item generative art collection where each character had its own unique mix of traits and features based on RNG or random number generation. You had a certain percentage chance of getting a different hat or a different skin color or a different outfit. This quickly became a collector's paradise and the culture of minting new NFT projects soon spun out of hand. By the end of May, Board Ape Yacht Club had just begun to touch one Ethereum as a floor price, meaning the cheapest one on the market was worth one Ethereum. And this was from an original mint price of 0.08 Ethereum, and this was when Ethereum was worth about $1,000. So the original minters of Board Ape Yacht Club were up huge, up grotesquely to the tune of 20x plus, and it created a ravenous passion for new NFT participants to find the next Board Ape Yacht Club. We saw amazing projects like Cool Cats and Sup Ducks and many other animal-themed generative art projects start to gain traction. We all knew that this was its own version of meme coin mania, NFT mania, where each and every project was one part of our future digital zoos that we would keep right in our metamasks. And even though we knew that a lot of these valuations for cartoons were unsustainable, the concept had been laid and the belief that NFTs could mean meaningful ownership within networks of people, could mean meaningful ownership over decentralized intellectual property, decentralized Disney. Imagine if you could have bought into Mickey Mouse in the 50s. These were the types of conversations happening around NFT land, and it led to an absolutely astronomical surge in valuations for these assets. We also saw the rise of generative art, like art blocks, and their flagship collection, the Fidenza, start to explode with value. Within just a few months, NFTs went from a few million dollars in volume a month to billions of dollars in volume a month, peaking in August of 2021. In fact, NFT mania got so big that OpenSea, pretty much the only NFT marketplace in existence, became a unicorn tech project, averaging over the last five months over $2 billion in trading volume, $100 million in fees, and clocking privately traded valuations for the company's equity at over $10 billion. But soon it became the case that NFTs could be much more than just scarce digital assets and that the teams behind them could continue building utility and excitement around them. This happened first and foremost with Board Ape Yacht Club, doing additional airdrops like the Board Ape Kennel Club and eventually the Mutant Ape Yacht Club airdrop, where each and every Board Ape holder received at least $20,000, but some as high as $1 million in an airdrop. 
This was unprecedented, even for normal crypto. And it started to gain attention far and wide, with basketball stars like Stephen Curry and rappers like Post Malone jumping head over heels to join the Board Ape Yacht Club. Without a doubt, Board Apes are the new Rolexes, the new Lamborghinis, the digital flex that so many NFT enthusiasts have been waiting for. And the value of the assets has rocketed in proportion to its cultural value. Board Apes at one point reached as high as a 70 Ethereum floor before the mutant ape airdrop. And while it came down to earth, touching as low as 30 ETH after that, Board Apes continued to grow in value, now once again safely above the 60 Ethereum floor price. And recently over the last week, they even flipped CryptoPunks in floor value, which is often seen as an impossibility. People compare CryptoPunks to Bitcoin and Board Apes to Ethereum, but the reality is a project that builds as aggressively as Board Apes is one that you cannot ignore. And thus Board Apes brought us the first NFT blue chip project, showing that there are NFTs that can be resilient even during crashes, that you can buy the dip on, and that some NFTs, certainly not all of them, but some, can make an amazing store of value. Of course, documenting each and everything that happened in NFT land here in this episode would be impossible. To go through the amazing alpha that we got from the Cyberkongs, the yield from their banana token, to talk about the concepts created by loot for adventurers, the scams, the rug pulls, and of course, the only project to flip both board apes and CryptoPunks, the incredible social experiment that is Neo Tokyo and the Citadel, created by myself and Alex Becker. There is so much to go into that we very well might do a 2021 mini doc on NFTs alone. But for now, it's important to realize that NFTs completely revitalized the industry during a terrible crash in the middle of 2021, where all the mainstream cryptos were down or sideways, and yet it was so easy to multiply your Ethereum in NFT land, with most successful mints going 10, 20, sometimes 100x from mint price in what felt like minutes. Altcoin season has never been as fruitful as NFT mania was for a few months over the summer of 2021. Some of the biggest victories from NFTs is that Web2 seems to acknowledge these as the part of crypto they want to be a part of the most. We saw Visa buy a CryptoPunk. We heard Instagram announcing plans for their own NFT marketplace. Reddit has announced that it will be having an NFT marketplace. Twitter has made it clear that you'll be able to verify your profile picture, your NFTs, right there on the Twitter homepage so someone can know if you really own that Bored Ape PFP. And as a huge vote of confidence, we saw Binance, FTX, and Coinbase announce their own NFT marketplaces. Now, for what it's worth, I believe centralized NFT marketplaces are doomed to fail. However, that's a topic for another day. What matters is that the biggest players in the Web2 space, as well as the Web3 space, the crypto space, fungible and non-fungible, have acknowledged that this innovation is here to stay and could be as big, if not bigger, than traditional crypto itself. So while 2021 was undoubtedly the year of NFTs, we've seen the first wave of what I've long said was the most important sector of cryptocurrency. And it was brought to us by a very unsuspecting participant, and that is one Axie Infinity. Now, since the last bear market of 2018, I've long held that the one product category that can work during a bear market is gaming. And that's because gamers love to buy digital stuff. They do it each and every day to increase their enjoyment from the game itself. It's the only industry in the world where users actively pay for digital stuff, digital possessions. And that's why it is a perfect fit for NFTs. But what I didn't anticipate and what was proven so clearly this year is that there's a new phenomenon that can happen in gaming with crypto and NFTs that exponentially expands the possibilities for all three of them. And that is the rise of play to earn. You see, Axie Infinity is a project that dates back to 2018. However, in the middle of the summer of 2020, out of nowhere, Axie Infinity started to go parabolic, reaching new all-time highs and going far, far beyond them. Before the crash in April, Axie was trading at about $10. And then the peak of the bull run of Q4, Axie traded as high as $164, over 16x its prior all-time high. And this is for a project that was worth way under a dollar at the end of 2020. That's multi-hundred X gains in short order. But what was so special about Axie and why did it change the way that we look at crypto, NFTs, and the entire market? 
Well, first of all, it pumped during a bear market, which was largely considered an impossibility for altcoins. Usually, if Bitcoin is in a down-only mode, there's absolutely nothing that the altcoins can do. And just like I had predicted so many years ago, we saw Axie Infinity prove with data that gamers don't care about Bitcoin, and that if they like their game and they want to trade the items, that that game ecosystem, that game economy can live even if Bitcoin is dying. Now, to be clear, Axie created something called a scholarship program, which allowed for the richer owners of the Axies, which are typically several hundred dollars to several thousand dollars, to lease out or rent out their assets to people who wanted to grind and play the game and earn the daily rewards that can come with what they call play to earn. Now, Axie has two tokens, the AXS token, which is their governance token, which controls their treasury, and then the SLP token, which allows for you to breed new Axies. Now, the more you play Axie, the more SLP you earn, but then you can also consume it by creating new Axies with that SLP. What we saw is that the hunger to become a part of this play to earn economy, specifically in the country of the Philippines, reached a fever pitch. And people across the Philippines started begging for oftentimes Western holders of the NFTs to make them scholars or to allow them to play to earn with their assets. This created an entire new market dynamic where the actual collectors and owners of the assets could essentially lease out these assets in a gig economy fashion and then split the rewards with those playing. Many quit their jobs and started focusing on playing Axie Infinity full time. And Axie, an objectively basic game, is still the leader in play to earn. What we've seen is that by creating a play to earn ecosystem on top of a video game with NFTs, you get an absolutely visceral cocktail that can bring in new audiences, keep them coming back for financial rewards, and have these economies become some of the biggest in the entire crypto space. Axie Infinity's daily volume on their marketplace on the Ronin sidechain of Ethereum has often spun out into the nine figure zone. That's right, nine figures in trading volume, hundreds of millions of dollars trading axes so that new people could get access to better play to earn or they could change their team dynamics of the axes that they hold. This is a real human effect where people around the world were having their lives dramatically improved by this innovation in the crypto space. This had nothing to do with Bitcoin. Axie alone was creating wild opportunities to increase the living quality for people in the Philippines and in doing so creating one of the biggest crypto economies in the history of the industry. And this was just the start as Axie led an entire gaming wave as the market recovered into the late stages of 2021. As much as Axie was the tip of the spear showing how important play to earn and this new gaming aspect of crypto could be for the industry as a whole, what we saw that came next was completely unexpected expected, yet one of the biggest bullish catalysts the industry has ever seen. Just as Axie Infinity was starting to gain a tremendous amount of traction and NFTs were starting to reach a fever pitch, attracting the biggest creators, talent, and platforms in Web2, we got the announcement out of nowhere that Facebook would be changing its name to Meta and focusing exclusively on building the metaverse. For many, like myself, we had to literally reach down and scoop our jaws off the floor. The category of project, metaverse, that we have long believed was the most important in the crypto industry, that quite frankly, crypto gaming is a step along the way to achieving. You need games before metaverse can truly thrive. The reality is that none of us expected Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg to become the spokespeople of this movement. And very quickly, we realized that that was not the world that we wanted to live in. Facebook is one of the worst offenders for centralization and data exploitation. To take the most important good, the metaverse, and entrust it to such bad actors as Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook seemed like a crime. But the fact that Zuck and FB had decided to pivot so dramatically into metaverse was one of the biggest green flags and green check boxes that you could put besides metaverse and gaming projects. It unleashed a bullish tidal wave of excitement and investment into this sector of crypto. But it wasn't just crypto people that were excited about the metaverse. Meta had opened Pandora's box of curiosity to the entire world, with normal people now learning what the concept of a metaverse was, connecting the dots between the science fiction movies like The Matrix, Ready Player One, and this digital revolution called crypto. So while the crash of the summer of 2021 was truly damaging, the reality is what came from the rubble 
NFTs, gaming, and metaverse are the three most important trends that I believe will bring mainstream adoption to this industry. NFTs will soon encapsulate all kinds of innovations. Gaming, in my opinion, is going to be the biggest subsector of crypto and a step along the way to our digital futures as they get combined into the eventual metaverses where we will spend our time. So while 2021's crash was brutal, what came out of it was something truly beautiful and something that will advance this movement not by years but by decades into a sustainable ecosystem with projects that make people's lives better. Finally, what would a 2021 recap for crypto be without detailing the world of Ethereum? See, Ethereum is where DeFi was created. Ethereum is where all of the biggest and brightest minds want to build their technology. Ethereum is where the NFT was created, the home of NFTs. However, Ethereum is also unsuitable for all of these things as the gas fees rapidly spun out of control in the earlier part of the year. And that's when the excitement around Ethereum's EIP-1559 began to take hold. You see, EIP-1559 completely changed the monetary policy of Ethereum such that with every transaction, a little bit of ETH is burned. This led to the concept of ultrasound money, meaning that Ethereum, as gas fees go up, would actually become deflationary, meaning that the more usage of the network would actually decrease the supply of ETH. This has historically been one of the biggest criticisms of Ethereum, is that its monetary policy is uncertain. We know that there's only 21 million Bitcoin, but we don't really know exactly how many Ethereum there are. This change is one of the biggest upgrades to Ethereum since it was created in 2015. So is it any wonder why people got extremely excited about it? But the reality is that this creates a weird dynamic, where people who hold the coin ETH are actually incentivized to see the network become unusable. The more gas fees, the more ETH burned, the more ETH burned, in theory, the higher the number goes on Ethereum's price, but we're missing the biggest part. All of this means that the fees on Ethereum are so high that the chain is pretty much unusable. This is a huge issue, as the holders of Ethereum are now actually kind of incentivized to see the chain not serve its users. This is a very, very sad reality. And this led to the revitalization of the ETH killer movement. Now, without a doubt, Ethereum's change in growth over 2021 is inspiring, but the fees and gas required to use the network sometimes stretched into the thousands just for one transaction. This means that normal people will never be able to use the chain. So is it any surprise that alternative chains like Binance Smart Chain and then eventually Solana and soon after AVAX and Luna started to explode with popularity as people realized that these chains worked faster and cheaper than Ethereum and there was enough community there to generate hype and gains out of the projects that were native to those networks. The Sol Luna AVAX trade, in fact, was one of the biggest and most prolific of the year. Despite Ethereum accomplishing so very much by housing the initial stages for DeFi, for NFTs, and for crypto gaming, the reality is that all of these things couldn't stop the alternative ETH chain, ETH killer movement. And thus, by the time the year was over, alternative L1s like Solana, Luna, and AVAX as well as gaming coins like Gala Games, Axie Infinity, The Sandbox, and Decentraland, they had become the undisputed champions of 2021. Ironically, they need each other more than they can admit. So after a year filled with historic advances, institutional adoption, celebrities and mainstream attention, the rise of NFTs, gaming, meme stocks and meme coins, culminating with a new and robust ETH killer movement, the question is where are we and what comes next? Well, currently the market seems focused on ETH scaling solutions, as well as in my opinion, the gaming run that we saw earlier this year is just the tip of the iceberg. Now, many, many will lose in gaming and NFTs as most projects are not of quality. However, good quality projects and NFTs in gaming, I believe still hold the most asymmetric upside. 
Same is true with alternative chains to Ethereum. Whatever the next Solana or Luna or AVAX might be, that project is most likely going to come packed with opportunity. Altcoins were a game of chicken where people were in a rush to sell them as soon as coins performed at all. With projects like Axie, Solana, Luna, AVAX, and the like, what we saw is that those who had conviction and diamond handed their coins ended up with orders of magnitude more gains. Those with conviction and diamond hands are the winners of 2021. So as we look at the market right now, we're seeing mild bounces in DeFi, which actually had a horrific 2021. We're seeing the Mutant Ape Yacht Club and Board Ape Yacht Club come back to life. We're seeing excitement around NFTs and really strong bounces out of the gaming and metaverse section. And I believe 2022 is going to be packed with opportunities, as much as it is packed with risks for those who believe that this year will be anything like the next. What 2021 has taught us more than anything is that dynamic and exponential growth can come from sectors that many, if not the vast majority, believe are useless or experimental technology. What we know is that narratives shift fast and that no narrative, whether it be DeFi, NFTs, memes, ETH killers, or metaverse can without fail continue to grow and pierce into mainstream adoption. Every narrative has a rocky road. Every narrative has winners and losers. The goal of every market participant is to find the best narratives and to ride the strong winners within them. Many were punished by trying to find the next blank instead of just buying into the coin that was showing a ton of strength. We saw this out of AVAX, out of Luna, out of Axie Infinity, and we saw many coins have dramatic pumps and then completely go to zero after the market realized that this was not a strong project. So as we're at the end of 2021, I think it's important to be wary of a few things. One, Attention matters. The coins and projects that are able to consistently garner attention will consistently likely do well. Two, narratives have been short-lived. While every narrative has some magic, and I believe that the gaming and metaverse narrative is a multi-year, multi-decade trend that is going to wildly improve the lives of people within and around crypto, the reality is, is that not all these projects are good. In fact, only a small percentage of them will survive and thrive over the long term. Your goal is to find them. And three, more can happen in one year in crypto than most people believe is possible in 10 years in technology. This is the most enigmatic, exciting, fast moving, and emotional space you could ever get yourself involved with. I believe that people who focus on crypto and spend enough time to understand the market will always outperform those who don't, at least for the next decade. So as we approach 2022, I think it's important to understand which narratives came out this year that are truly significant. My bet is on gaming. I believe that is the most important narrative that surfaced in 2021 and that 2022 is going to be the year of crypto gaming, as many projects who saw Axie Infinity's success have had enough time Time to get early work in progress, V1s, betas of their games out to market, and the real builders in the gaming industry are rapidly seeing crypto as a viable alternative. But the main takeaway from 2021 is to remain curious, because those who are on the bleeding edge using new platforms, whether it was Axie Infinity, Yield Guild Games, OpenSea, DYDX, new crypto apps without tokens, those people were oftentimes wildly rewarded, dramatically and exponentially more than others who chose to just play it safe and wait for things to become established. 2021 rewarded the adventurous, the excited, the curious. I think this is an incredible and important takeaway that will better inform you for 2022. And in my opinion, it's just a good thing for the entire industry. New tech, new innovation is what should power this industry. And thus sitting on our hands and hoping for the number to go up on Bitcoin and Ethereum is in my opinion, not the behavior that we wanna reward with the most gains. This is good. Innovation is being rewarded. Sure, there's a bunch of scams and bad activity as well but the net effect is a wild amount of progress in a very short amount of time. And many, many people's financial lives have been forever improved because of what happened this year. But I'm curious, what narratives do you think were most important in 2021? Was this, in your mind, the most important year in the history of cryptocurrency? And what are you looking forward to for 2022? I hope you all enjoyed this recap of the most incredible year that was 2021 in crypto land. If you liked the video, please like the video and subscribe for more updates. My name's Elio Trades. You can follow me on Twitter at Elio Trades. I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.